okay, a vision and why you need one. Ooh, that worked. Uh, so vision is the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. Visioning skills are things that we're using all the time, but usually it's quite unconscious. For example, when you think about going on holiday, you think about, oh yeah, I'm going to be lying there on a beach and I'm going to have a martini there and I'm going to have a good book there. Or you could be rushing around going to galleries or you could be skiing down a mountain. But you start thinking about that and then you start thinking, okay, so if I want to do it, when am I going to be going? When am I going to get the tickets? Where am I going to stay? So you start putting in all the practical things. And it's true to say that most of us probably spend more time thinking about and planning our holidays than we do about planning our careers. For the purposes of this, I make a distinction between a vision and a goal. You often hear people talking about, oh, you've got to have these goals, these big numerical things to go for, which is true, but I find that with a lot of creative people, the thing that's important is the process. It's the creative process, the being able to work and be cutting edge and all that kind of thing. And the numbers are important, but if I give you an example like um, an artist, for instance, putting on a solo show, what he might want to do with the show is to enhance his reputation, uh, to delight or shock or politicise the people that come through the door. But the things he wants to measure are things like he wants to get 3,000 visitors and sell 80% of the work. So both of them are viable, but some of them are more exciting than others. I can guarantee that in five years' time, we're all going to be somewhere. Now, you could be way on your way to your dream career, or you could be exactly where you are now. And having a vision helps you to make the choice of whether you decide where you're going or whether you're just going to drift and hope for the best. Oop, there we go. So having a, a vision it gives you direction and a purpose. It helps you know what you're aiming for. It's no good um, sort of just bimbling up to Euston Station and going, oh, oh, I thought I might be able to get a plane from Brazil here. You know, you have to know where you want to go. And having a vision in your professional life means that if you, that's where you want to get to, you need to think about who do I need to pitch to, what other skills do I need to learn, what other networks do I need to be on. It keeps you focused and positive. And when you're focused and positive, you become more resilient. I would love to be able to tell you that if you only think happy thoughts, only happy things are going to happen to you. But unfortunately, life isn't like that. Um, if I give you an example from my own life, um, on the 1st of January 2000, I was living in Chester, which is a perfectly pretty little place, but I desperately wanted to come back to London. And I told my friends on that day that by the end of the year, I would be back in London. Now, when I said that, I had no idea what job I would be doing or where I'd be living. So I created this picture for myself, which was I would be standing on Waterloo Bridge at sunset, hence the picture, and I would be listening to, there's a brilliant, brilliant song by the Kinks called Waterloo Sunset. Best pop song ever fact. Go and listen to it. Wonderful. During the course of the next year, I went for lots and lots and lots and lots of job interviews. I got down to the last two on quite a few of them. And then I would get the inevitable letter or phone call saying, terribly sorry, very strong competition, that sort of thing. And I am only human, so I would get very upset, uh, maybe have a little cry or stamp my foot. But every morning, I would play Waterloo Sunset. And I would remind myself that, OK, it was upsetting and it was annoying and I really wanted that job, but I kept the bigger vision in my mind. I kept thinking, OK, it's just a step back. Let's carry on. Oop. Having a message gives you a clear message to communicate. I don't know whether you've heard the theory of six degrees of separation. You're only six people away from the people you most want to meet. The thing is, you don't always know who those six people are. 
I actually know I'm five people away from George Clooney, but the first person won't introduce me because they know what I would do. <laughs> um, to give you an example of this, I went to a networking event and I took two of my clients with me who hadn't met before and they just started chatting. And one of them said, what I'm trying to do at the moment is get commissioned by the Financial Times to do some writing. And I'm trying to work out the best way to, to approach them. To which my second client said, well, I can introduce you because I house sit for him when he goes on holiday. I mean, how could you factor that into a plan? This might sound like luck, but I have to say that I don't really believe in luck. I think it all comes down to having a prepared mind. And when you have your vision, it heightens your awareness to opportunities. Um, I don't know how often you've been going out to buy something and suddenly you see it everywhere. So if you're thinking of buying a red car, suddenly there's red cars everywhere. I wouldn't mind betting that when you go out today you suddenly notice more red cars just because I've put the message there. But when you've got this vision, there's always a part at the back of your brain which as you're talking to people or you're reading something or you're looking at something online, there's a bit of your brain that's going, I wonder how I could use this. I wonder how this could get me an introduction. How could that link into what I'm doing? So it means your mind is always looking for possibilities. Next one. A vision makes you more proactive because it's giving you something to go for and to always be moving towards. And even when things come up that make you have little detours like this, you're still going ahead. You've still got this picture in mind. And it helps you to make more informed decisions. So if you've got a couple of options and you're not sure which one to take, you can think, well, which one is going to get me closer to my vision? Or which one is going to give me better skills or better networking? So. Vision is something I work with an awful lot with my clients. And then we start with, oh, well, how do you get a vision? What should it be? Well, it should be what is right for you. It should inspire you. It should be true to your values. It should be the thing that gets you up in the morning. And when you have that, it automatically starts enthusing other people with your passion. And when you're thinking about your vision, you have to think about what for want of a better term, success is in your terms. For some people, it is being rich. For others, it's being famous. For others, it's having a perfect work-life balance. For someone else, it's about creating a new cutting-edge way of doing something or a new way of looking at things. I always come down to the fact that as long as you're not harming anyone else, if it's the thing that moves you, then I think that's the right thing for you to be doing. So where do you start? Well, I always think daydreaming is a great thing to do and to think big. A lot of us think, oh, well, I can't do that because, you know, well, I couldn't do it next week or next year. So put it in time. Um, I usually work with clients on something like three to five years. But if you think of your, your own examples, you know, when you started your courses, you didn't think, oh, yeah, well, I'll get a degree in like, you know, two, three months. You, know, you knew you would have to spend time working at it. So it's the same thing with planning your vision. The sort of things that I encourage clients to think about is, I just ask them random questions like, in five years' time, where are you going to be living? Are you going to be in a wonderful kind of urban place, or are you going to be living on the coast? Are you going to be in the country? What sort of, you know, is it an apartment or a house? Where are you going to be working? Are you going to be in a lovely little studio that's just set up for you and how you want it? Or are you going to be wanting to work with a team? Are you a brand? Are you a label? Um, are you selling on Etsy or Harrods or Habitat? Have you got your lovely own boutique somewhere? Um, and are you going to be kind of high-end exclusive or bringing creative, affordable quality to everyone? So once you get to your vision, and we are whipping through this very quickly, if you Google um, visualization and guided visu visualization, you can find some really good MP3s that you can download that will take you through a visualization process that will give you um, all the questions that you can, you can follow through. So once you have your vision, how do you keep it alive? 
once you start getting everybody else's demands. Well, I mentioned earlier, I used a song, Waterloo Sunset. You can create a little phrase for yourself, like a mantra. Uh, now, my company is called Catching Fireworks. And with my vision, I, I, I talked earlier about the difference between vision and goals. I have lots of sensible goals. I know how much money I need to be earning each year. I know how many clients I need, um, how many networking meetings I go to. And the truth is, the absolute truth is, none of that would get me out of bed in the morning. Why I do what I do is for that moment when I'm working with a client and they go, <gasps> when they suddenly get a new insight or a new idea or see how something's possible. And for me, I think about that as lighting the blue touch paper. And that's what I want to do is light lots of blue touch papers. I've got another client who's a bespoke dress designer. And she says she only wants people to wear clothes that make them want to do a little dance. And a couple of decades ago, there was a teenager who said, I want to be as famous as Purcell Automatic. And lover or hater, I think you have to admit that Victoria Beckham is probably now more famous than Purcell Automatic. Another thing you can do is have a vision board where you just put up all the images of things that mean something to you. It could be a place, it could be things, it could be a feeling you want to have. So you've just got it there constantly to remind you why you're doing this, particularly when you have days when nobody's returning your calls or you've got to chase somebody about an invoice. It just reminds you why you're doing this. I've got a client who's printed off a week of a diary for, um, I think it's the first week of May 2018. And he's got there all the appointments he wants for that week. So on Monday, he's at Harvey Nichols all day discussing how they're going to be selling his work, promoting his work. On Tuesday, he is uh, being filmed by the BBC for the culture programme. And on Wednesday, he's having lunch with Grace and Perry. You know, it's about that's the sort of life he wants to be leading, leading. That's the sort of reputation he wants to have by that time. I also know a, a coach who has a client who wants to have an obituary in The Guardian. How she's going to know she's done that, I don't know. But Now, the most important thing when you've got your vision and you've thought it through is to take action. There is a Japanese proverb which says, a vision without a plan is just a dream. A plan without a vision is just drudgery. But a vision with a plan can change the world. So once you take your vision, start thinking about what you need to get there. Who do you need to know? What other skills do you need to learn? Where do you need to network? And I always say to clients, take one action a day towards your vision. It doesn't need to be a big one. But even if it's just sitting down and reviewing other actions you want to take or things you want to do next, just so that you keep working away. And every day, it's another way of keeping your goal, your vision present. Uh, I'll tell you another quick story which just illustrates some of these things. Um, I had a client who came to me. Um, she was a photographer. She was doing wedding photography and portrait photography and fine art photography and product photography, basically doing everything. And she knew that she really needed to focus on one. And she, she said the thing she really wanted, kind of thing on her tombstone, was portrait photographer. That's where she wanted to build her reputation. She lived in London, but she goes to New York a lot and really loves the vibe there. And so her little mantra became, I'm a portrait photographer working in London and New York. She went to a private view. Uh, I think it was a sculpture show. And she was just looking at a piece of work, and somebody else came up and was looking at the work as well. They started talking about it. And then inevitably, there came that moment where one of them said, and what do you do? And my friend had never said this thing out loud before. And she thought, well, I don't know what it's going to sound like, but I'm never going to meet this person again anyway, so I might as well try. And she said, well, I'm a portrait photographer working in London and New York. And the other person said, oh, that's interesting. I manage a gallery in New York, and we've been working on fine art, but we want to bring in photography. Next time you're in the States, bring your portfolio along, and we'll have a chat. And they're planning her first solo show in New York for next spring. So you never know. So this has been a real whip through very, very fast. I normally take a lot longer on this, but I hope that I have encouraged you to think about a vision, think big, 
take action and make one of those actions telling people what it is you want to do. Now, this fits into business planning and just a little plug, I have a free ebook, as it says, um, Demystifying the Business Planning Process. And it's a book for people who really don't like the idea of having to even begin business planning. And it shows how using the same skills that you need to get across London can help you with the same basic steps to start the journey, if you like, of your career. And those are my details. And that was very quick. So any questions? I should say I have a blog um, on my website and there are a couple of um, blogs on there about visioning and going through the whole Waterloo Sunset story and setting goals and visions. So it's all up there if you want to have a little browse. <laughs>